and systematic reviews can be conducted on any type of study. What you're attempting to do is synthesize and summarize all the literature on a particular research question. So that can be randomized controlled trials. It can be to do with interventions, and that's probably people are most familiar with those. But it can be anything. It can be cohort studies. It can be studies about natural history. It can be studies about reliability. I've done some of that. It, it can be qualitative studies. Uh, it can be diagnostic studies, uh, validity studies. And you can even have reviews of systematic reviews. There are so many systematic reviews out there that we're now in the territory of summarizing systematic reviews. So there's pretty well anything can be systematically reviewed. That's the bottom line. Um, the, the other bottom line is that pretty well every type of systematic review has standard methods or formats or guidelines for evaluating the quality of those studies that are included. You shouldn't be, if, if you were interested in doing a systematic review, methodology that you use is pretty standardized now, should be available somewhere if you look around for it. Um, for instance, you know, there are big databases like Cochrane in the UK, but it's an, it's an international thing really, but it's based in the UK, but started off in the UK. Um, and they are big in terms of doing meta-analysis. We're coming to talk about meta-analysis in a moment. And they're, uh, the good handbooks are written by Cochrane as well, particularly around randomized control trials. You're doing it, you're doing a complicated systematic review, looking at RCTs. I would definitely use the Cochrane database and their methodology. Um, so whatever, whatever, type of studies you want to include in your systematic review, so whatever your research question is, the kind of stages you go through are pretty much the same. Um, I w if, if you were going to be doing it, I would publish your, um, your proposal with something like Prospero, which is an electronic database that's held by York University, I think it is. Um, but that's good for a couple of reasons. I'll come into them in a moment. So the, I, the, the, what you should do first is determine, if you're going to do a systematic review, is determine that it's necessary to do one. There are lots of systematic reviews out, out there. You shouldn't be repeating work that's already just been done. Uh, if somebody is doing a systematic review, again, if you look at Prospero, that will tell you if somebody is already in the process of doing that. Uh, you could repeat a systematic review if it's a bit outdated now and be in several that you know about subsequent studies that are relevant in that review area. If you know of several, then it's likely that once you start looking in more detail, you'll come across quite a number. So, so those are the reasons. So uh, the other reason for writing, for doing your proposal up front with Prospero is that the when it comes to reviewing it, um, uh, you can guarantee to the reviewers if you're trying to get it published, which is presumably the reason you're doing it, they can check that you haven't changed your uh, proposal, your methods on route. So the stages, you could, first of all, you've got to identify all the studies. So that means from different sources. So that will include searching things like Medline, Sinal, et cetera, et cetera, all those kind of electronic medical databases. Also, an important thing is to search the reference list of the studies that you do find. Um, however tight you try to make your search strategy, you will always, for some reason, uh, and very annoyingly, acquire a lot of rubbish en route. So you've got to filter out studies that you have got. So first of all, they'll be just filtering out from, from the, probably from the titles, and then you go down to the abstract, filter them a bit more. You should be using predefined criteria for what's being excluded, what's being included. So then you'll end up with your uh, n number of studies. Hopefully, it'll be um, possibly into double figures, something like that, but not hugely more than that. Um, one of the problems with systematic reviews is you end up with huge amounts of data. So that. That's the difficult thing. And the more studies you have, obviously, the more data. So it can be a bit overwhelming. But then you've got to do your systematic collection of that data. 